What's up, sneakerheads? Harrison Graham here from Chat Sports with another episode of NBA Now. On today's show, we're going to take all your questions. So use hashtag NBA or Super Chat. No Super Chats yet, so if you send one in, you will jump to the front of the line. We'll start with Marty K. Will the Bulls finally trade Zach Levine? Marty, I think what's most likely in this scenario is a trade deadline deal because I don't think the Bull, the way the Bulls are operating, they want to try and compete this year. So I think they're going to see how it goes uh, early on and uh, see kind of evaluate where they're at approaching the trade deadline. And if they're not contending, I think Levine, DeRozan, Caruso, a lot of those guys could become available. Um, but uh, I, I don't think an off-season trade will happen unless they just get a huge offer that uh, that they have not gotten up to this point. So I think he stays there for now, uh, and it gets revisited at the trade deadline depending on where uh, they are. Fabian here, then we'll get to that $20 super chat. Fabian says, think the Knicks will make another move. I mean, I think they will – at least sign a vet minimum guy, but will they make a trade? You know, there was a report out there that New York um, was working on a trade with the Clippers, but uh, the Clippers were asking for a little bit too much. So they backed out of that. Uh, Leon Rose might have a patient approach here. Maybe he says, hey, we're going to roll into the season with what we got, and if we feel like we need to make a splash move at the deadline, uh, maybe for Zach Levine, uh, we'll uh, we'll do that, but uh, I don't think they're going to force the issue. They won 50 games last year, just about. They were the second or uh, fifth, fifth seed in the East, made the second round. Um, you know, you, you shouldn't make a trade just to make a trade, but uh, I do think they we, they are an opportunistic franchise and uh, will look to strike if an opportunity is there. The Gold Eagle super chat. Shout out to the Gold Eagle with the twenty. He says Kobe is the only all-time great who won three championships with a teammate much greater than him. He can't be top five. We've discussed that as well in our debate uh, around Kobe Bryant. Is he a top five player in NBA history? There's a very strong argument. Those first two titles with the Lakers that Shaq was better, and there's an argument the third one he was better. Now it's more of a debate in that third one. They were definitely closer, but. At least two of the five that he won, he was not the best player. So I think that does have to be considered when uh, evaluating Kobe's career. And I think there's an argument that Shaq is ranked higher than Kobe, which is why when I am asked this question, is Kobe Bryant a top five player ever, type Y, free S, or N for no, I would say no. I think he's top 10. I would for sure put him top 10, but uh, I can't sit here and undisputedly say he is top five. Uh, he's one of the greatest players of all time, uh, but uh, he's top 10 to me, not top five, a legend nonetheless. It's a good debate to have. What's up, Say? Uh, should the Bulls look to bring in a guy like Jermichael Green uh, I help them with, uh, to help them with some of their big man depth? Yeah, he can kind of play three through five, depending on uh, how you build your roster. I think he's best suited as a stretch four type. Um, he shot the ball fairly good for Golden State last year, but was in and out of their rotation, especially in the postseason. Um, I'd be okay with it. Vet minimum deal uh, for Jermichael Green uh, to give you some more uh, front court scoring because you make a good point. After uh, Nikola Vucevic, you don't really have a ton of that. I mean, how much is Patrick Williams going to get you in the scoring department? Hopefully he's a double-digit scorer this year, but uh, I think a guy like Jermichael Green can get you, you know, six to eight points coming off the bench. Jamahu, what can the Mavs ideally get for Hardy? I mean, I think if it was just a pick, you'd probably get like a protected first or maybe even an unprotected first from a team. But I think if the Mavs were to trade Hardy, it would be in a deal to acquire an all-star, like some kind of trade where it's like Jaden Hardy, Maxi Kleba, and JaVale McGee plus a couple of picks for a Paul George or something like that. I think I don't think it would be a one-for-one -one swap. I think he'd be a part of a bigger deal, but – uh, I actually think he has more trade value than Josh Green. Uh, so uh, I would not trade Jaden Hardy unless you're getting a clear-cut all-star. Hit that subscribe button here at Chat Sports, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We continue to plug out NBA content all the time here with uh, the latest news updates, rumors that are circulating, trade buzz that's out there uh, with uh, big-name players across the association. Don't miss any of it. Hit that subscribe button right now. From Chase Jr., if Dame isn't traded to Miami, which team does he start the season with? <sighs> Portland? I mean, I, I just, you know, unless something changes, unless Jason Tatum can convince Dame, hey, man, come here, uh, 
Let's make it happen in Boston. I don't know what team is going to emerge out of nowhere and be the team that convinces Dame, right? Now, doesn't have a no trade clause, so it's not like he controls everything, but if him if his agent is telling all teams but the Heat, we don't want to play here, you're going to get a disgruntled player. Well, unless he changes his tune on that, it seems unlikely that one of those teams would trade for him. I would consider calling that balk if I liked him enough if I was a GM, but not all GMs are willing to make that gamble. Where does Dame play next season? If you think it's the Blazers still type B, I don't think it will be. If you think it's the Miami Heat type H, that's where I think he'll be. If you think it's someone else type O for other, or you can drop a team name in the comments, where does Dame play next season? Icebox to great. What do the Hawks need to get back to the Eastern Conference Finals? Look, I mean, let's be kind of honest. That run was kind of a fluke. And and, and I'm not making – I'm, I'm not like saying, you know, the Hawks are gar a garbage franchise or this and that. Producer Coop might be. I'm not. Uh, I think they can be a playoff team next year, but – it was, the it was the year after the bubble. Oh, the fans weren't in the sands. The Sixers choked once again. Like, that 76ers team losing to that Hawks team is a disgrace. I mean, it, it, I, I, of all the Sixers shortcomings in the second round in recent years, there is no doubt that is the worst one. I mean, they, they should not have lost to the Atlanta Hawks. So, um, you know, I think they need, like, a big-time wing next to Trey Young. They brought in DeJounte Murray, who can help defensively last year, and he obviously can score. I don't love that fit with Trey Young, though, so I don't know. I mean, uh, do you reset a little bit and, and, and trade Trey Young and Clint Capella and build around DeJounte and other players? It's tough to say. Denver's, what else will the Rockets need to reach the playoffs? I think time more than anything else, like, you know, Van Vliet and Brooks, look, they're clear overpays, but I do think they'll help them in the winning department. Now, they're going to go from 18 to 20 wins to 44, which is probably what you need to make the playoffs. That seems like a stretch, but uh, you need time. You need these young players to continue to improve. Shane Goon, take another step. Jalen Green, take another step. Some of these other young bucks as well. So I can need time, and you need to see how Van Vliet and Brooks mesh with these young players. Brandon Brown, are the Lakers done, or do you see another move in them? I think they're pretty much done, at least for now. Now, I definitely think they're a trade deadline team. Like, they brought back a lot of their guys, like D'Lo and Austin Reeves, et cetera. Maybe you package some of those mid-tier contracts at the deadline for a third star next to LeBron and AD, but I don't think that trade's out there right now for them. I think they're pretty content with what they've done. They've added guys like Torrey and Prince, too, so uh, I think they're content. Now, will the Lakers win the West this year? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I still think Phoenix and Denver, and I'll put Denver as the team to be, are the top two in the West, but LA and Golden State are right there. Y for yes, N for no. What do you guys think when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers?